a million and a half dollars US value just in worm castings, 500,000 kgs of calcium. We got 32% proteins on wheat. No basil, both fields, all of our fields combined, I think we're at less than 120 units of nitrogen. Hey, Denver Black with Soilcraft. I'm out here in this beautiful field of wheat in Zambia with Craig Harding, the director at Riverside Farm, where I live and where we get up to all kind of antics uh, when it comes to soil health and crop health and um, animal husbandry. Um, we're out here in this beautiful wheat field. Why? Because as, as Craig and I have been working together over the last few years, um, working on our crop nutrition and crop rotation and all those things and trying to integrate and mash as many regenerative concepts in one place as possible, um, I keep hearing the same rebuttal or statement over and over again from Craig when I say when he says what do you think we should do for for our basil we pulled soil samples we both looked at it and I said well how do I recommend we put phosphorus down as a basil when we're near high phosphate levels and Craig says we've always uh, had to put 300 kgs a hectare of whatever the basil would be um, because that's what we've done and so yeah it's been a challenge looking at the at the systems you know for me historically we'd have a word document and we would have the day we're going to start yeah. and the day we're going to end the crop. We're going to have every step, you know, the GS growth stage mapped out. And this year I didn't even do one for the first time in, in I don't know, you know, almost 10 years. Um, because it's not like the same farm it was last year. And the last year wasn't the same as it was the year before by any stretch. And so to predict out um, exactly what I'm going to do, I can't. I actually have to get down and I have to you know communicate with the plants look at it look at the soil see where it's at and then adjust and respond dynamically because it's not the same it's not the same and this isn't the same it was 12 months ago not even close so that's craig keeps saying uh but then we're, this is stressful i feel like i'm having to learn how to farm all over again exactly yeah and it's like and i'm with you because um you know the funny thing is we've been doing this at soilcraft for a number of years but when I say doing this, I'm talking about a, the full program, if you will, the full yeah. suite, not a silver bullet, but a cumulative program that evolves year over year yeah. as we progress. I mean, w for instance, this wheat field was sorghum not that long ago, and that wasn't part of the plan. No. Um, because of planters coming late and things like that, yeah. and you have to, and, and I Rain. think we're glad we did, because yeah. wow, the results have been amazing. But as a result of that so so we're flexible but what i say the soil craft program or plan it's holistic right we're, we're looking at first yeah. and foremost we know the soil is alive so we have to keep we have to put biology at the forefront and so sorghum has done that the wheat has done that these these crop residues are key to that because these these microbes need a home but then what we're able to do through these crop programs is we're able to put in aerobic teas we're able to use our soil vigor which revs up the soil biology and we're able to use our leaf vigor products on the leaves to reduce plant stress increase exudates yeah and as we do that like we're building soil and so you know we keep <laughs> commenting and sending each other pictures constantly of yeah. not dirt no yeah. But worm casting. Worm casting. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that was most interesting to me when we started planting the crop um, <clears throat> four years ago, not even four years ago, three years ago, when I went to plant wheat, we first got our 1590 drill. I called up one of our good friends who was a long-time uh, no-tiller, and I said, I don't know how to get the seed to get in the soil, because when I'm trying to run it and, and run it no-till to cut the, the, the st stubble from the soybeans, I can't get it to go deep enough in the soil to bury and cut the stubble in, at, at, at once. He says, well, just put a bunch of weight on there. So I had the 1590 maxed out down pressure and I put in over one ton of steel rail ties on the back of it. Mm -hmm. And I still barely got it in and I had to you know, adjust the depths. And this year I had to make the depth about half, or no, about 30% shallower than we've ever planted mm. because in the exact same field, I had no weights and I had to reduce the down pressure and still reduce the, the settings on the, the 1590 because the seed was going too deep. And the reason is, is because of this. You, when we were, came four years ago, you couldn't just reach your fingers down and scoop up soil at will. I mean, look at this, I'm not even like, and even when it was dry, it had two, maybe three inches of worm castings. And if you look at that, like this isn't soil, 
this is worm castings. I'm planting a crop on a worm farm, and I didn't bring any worms in. Mm. And so the other day we were chatting a little bit, and we said, what would the value of this be if you had to buy worm castings? Now I know because we do we do, we do uh, you teas. know the teas. And so I said, well, let's take a look at that. And he said, oh, I'll send you the numbers. And then I got antsy, and so I started <laughs> yeah. looking. And, you know, we've got places here with six inches of worm casting. We've got places here with an inch and a half. And so we said, well, let's play with two inches. If you get two inches of worm castings in your field, um, on a, for us, it's 60 hectares of, of, of field. Um, that calculates to well over um, a million and a half dollars U.S. value just in worm castings. 500 500,000 kgs of calcium 500,000 kgs of calcium you know how much money it costs and that's not calcitic lime that's pure calcium yeah 500,000 kgs of of pure lime i mean those are numbers that are absolutely astounding and we know that worms create calcium in their glands um you know organically in their in their own system so you see that and then you wonder why do i have to farm on a different farm again it's because in a year, it's a completely different farm again. And so um, it's fun. It's exciting. It changes your mindset to being something you realize you're part of a living system. You're not, you're not, you know, you don't have sand and you're doing hydroponics anymore. Sure. That's what we were doing before. It was hydroponics, basically. And so now we're living on a living system. And you say, well, that's a pain. You're having to learn to farm again. Well, it's a pain until you check the, the bank account when yeah. you harvest the crop and you realize how little input you were able to do compared to what you did historically. You know, we went from five fungicides to no fungicides, no fungal treatments, doing biological treatments on the seed. Um, yeah, I mean, all the things that we're doing practice-wise have dropped my cost of chemistry inputs to, I'd say about 25% of what they were four years ago. And then I'm getting, you know, millions of dollars mm. worth of value. Seriously, it's crazy. And you're saying, well, well, you didn't put it on. Well, we didn't put it on, but what we put on made worms show up because the biology was there for them to eat and then they just went nuts so to me it's really exciting to think of what we can do and so now i'm an, an addict i said you know <laughs> we, we put the soil vigor yeah. on we put the nos on the car so now but now i want to i want to i want to add the the turbocharger and i want to add because it's so exciting to see the response to soil in a place people often say you can't grow the organic matter and we see the organic matter growing up, we see, I mean, you, you saw the, the biology in that soil is just absolutely ridiculous. So super exciting. Um, wheat, last year we had a super hard year, super stressed for water at the beginning and the end of the crop. And we still harvested a reasonable crop. When you took away the cost savings that we, that we had um, from changes in practice, it was a very good crop. Mm. And we got 32% proteins on wheat. Here in Zambia, in the short, uh, fast-growing season, thirty percent um, protein on wheat is it's gold. So, I'm super happy. I'm super excited to see what this crop is going to do um, with what I would say is fifty percent better-looking soil than it was even a year ago. So, and we're, we'll we're, see. We've got a fraction of the ni the, the nutrients applied. I mean, yeah, we, yeah. We didn't put a basil on. <laughs> no basil. We're at we're, right now. This field, or you know, both fields, all of our fields combined. I think we're at less than 120 units of nitrogen. nitrogen, nitrogen. Um, and so, yeah, and, and at least no on fungicides. The other one, we're what already, you know, yeah, we're 20 percent of the way, 30 percent of the way yeah. in. Yeah, arguably at this time you would have had what percentage of your nitrogen applied? Oh, two thirds, right? For sure. So, and yeah. that's two thirds of what 230, 250 units of nitrogen. 300. 300 <laughs> units of <laughs> nitrogen. <laughs> and we're at, so, and we're at 120. Yeah. And we're two thirds of the way there. Yeah. And it looks amazing. I mean, that, that is one of the hardest parts about learning to farm again as well. It's so challenging because when you're used to this system, which yeah. is calculated, and you know your input, you know your costs, and, and but you're doing it because you know your yield. Yeah. So you get used to this, and you get used to the wheat looking a certain way. Yeah. And it's challenging because, I mean, right now, the wheat is true green. Yeah. Like, it, it's beautiful. It's not stressed. Yeah. It's not lacking in nitrogen. That's right. It doesn't seem to be lacking in, in any nutrients, and so and we'll, we're it's we're to the development stage, especially there. We're going to pull saps hopefully yep. this next week, so we'll find out. We'll see what that looks like. Um, I'm anxious to see that, but um, yeah. So, anyways, this is just a spin up. So we're going to sit down hopefully this week actually, yeah. and really hash this out a bit more. What it what does it mean? So we're going to go through the numbers. We're going to go through the value of nitrogen, value of phosphorus, calcium, silica. 
Um, the water holding capacity, I was looking yeah. at water holding capacity numbers on warm casting when un- you add this much. Yeah. But guys, what I get so excited about, and Craig, I think, I think you can echo me in this is, I mean, we're trying to do our best to take the most cutting edge testing, <laughs> et cetera, to, to track our progress. Yeah. But the crazy thing is those numbers are way out of range. And so people are saying, I don't buy it. Yeah. That's impossible. And, yeah. and I agree with them. Yeah. From what's historically proven, yeah. it is impossible. Yeah. But then you come to the field and you say, well, but this is impossible. Yeah. And so what I think is amazing is if we can come to the field and measure in inches yeah. of worm castings, yeah. then and we have all the science. We know what worm castings average. Yeah. We know the implications that come from such a thing. And yeah. and I think that's an important thing to remember. We measure everything we can measure so that we can manage as best we can. But what we're seeing here is literally, I know you joke, it's not, it's not Terra Preta, but... Yeah, we're play, playing on the edge of the Terra Preto concept, I think. Terra Scratch, just... um, Yeah, and I think we have to be conscious of the fact that we live in a world where we don't actually know everything. Our temptation yeah. is to say, well, it's not in a scientific journal with a double-blind study. It That's doesn't right. exist. But neither did nuclear power. Yeah. Neither did, you know, electricity. Neither did all these things right. before they did. Yeah. And so the idea that we're seeing things that we can measure but we can't explain, doesn't mean that it's not science. What it means is we don't know enough yet. That's right. And so to me, it's really exciting to see biology driving it. And, and you know, we'd like to take credit, yeah. but the reality is when we can align with, with nature and yeah. with the, you know, the, with the creator, we end up with things that we can't explain because we didn't create it and we're yeah. just finding ways to align with design. And so if we can align with design, hey, we win. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Craig. Join us with our podcast as uh, we we wrestle through what it means to learn how to farm again. Thanks very much.